welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Uh, what we wanted to do here was go over a question that we posted on our Facebook page um, currently, uh, and we had a lot of questions come in and a lot of good ones. And then there was uh, quite a few that are coming in on uh, EKG resources that I recommended. Okay, so uh, this question here was on the Facebook page, and it's an 86-year-old male coming in with substernal chest pressure. Uh, initially was getting relief by sublingual nitro, eventually requiring a drip and then getting no relief. Okay, his EKG, uh, at least the limb leads, are shown here, which should be sufficient to help you make the diagnosis. So uh, if you want to uh, try this yourself, the few choices we have are uh, A, anterior STEMI, ST elevation, myocardial infarction, that is, uh, B, lateral STEMI, C, inferior STEMI, or D, no ST elevation MI. Okay, so if you haven't seen this, um, go ahead. You can pause the video, try it yourself. Um, in the meantime, I'll let you know that those that are looking for more practice questions like this, looking to master their EKG game or not fall behind, obviously check out our Facebook page. Simply search the EKG guy. We have over 1 million people following us, so thank you all so much for your support. Uh, very humbling. So back to our question here, our 86-year-old gentleman not getting relief from nitro, this EKG, what are you thinking? Okay, so, you know, when we see these, it, it's really important to think of uh, reciprocal changes with ST elevation MIs, okay, because that can help kind of confirm and lock down the diagnosis. And first of all, you have to know how to localize some of these leads. When we look at the limb leads, we think of two, three, and AVF as our inferior limb leads, okay, and then one, and AVL is more as lateral limb leads, okay? And when you look at them, put them on the quadrant system, here is uh, where one would sit, AVL would sit here, here's AVF, okay? You have lead two and then lead three here, all right? So that's kind of how it sits. And so we said that these are more of our inferior leads and these are more of your lateral leads. And so that's important because when we're kind of diagnosing uh, ST elevation MI, localization is key, okay? It can help us actually uh, look for and detect maybe where in occlusion or which artery may be involved, uh, especially helpful for cath purposes, okay? So in terms of here, notice that we look for ST elevation at the J point, which is the end of our QRS complex, the beginning of our ST segment. And in this case here, uh, we can see elevation in the inferior leads, okay? So notice that here, there's some elevation and three, as well as AVF, okay? If you look at them, you can tell that lead three has the greatest elevation followed by AVF and then followed by lead two, okay? And it kind of fits that scenario. So ST elevation, if we look at um, the amplitude, it's greatest in three followed by AVF, followed by lead two and kind of what you would expect, okay? So greatest in this lead. If we look at the depression that we see in the lateral lead, so clearly here there's some depression as well as some horizontal ST depression there in lead one, it's greatest in lead AVL. So if you look at ST depression, you're seeing that AVL's ST depression is greater than that in lead one, okay? And in such cases, you may want to now ask yourself, does that actually fit the scenario, okay? So we said that the greatest ST elevation was in lead three, okay? And we're seeing now that the greatest ST depression is in lead AVL. Well, here's lead AVL. And notice that lead three and AVL are sitting opposite from each other. So you have the greatest ST elevation here, the greatest ST depression there. And those are what we call reciprocal changes or mirror changes, okay, of them. Think of like a mirror sitting between these. And so in one, you're seeing uh, ST elevation and one, ST depression, okay? And because the ST elevation is in these inferior leads, we would call this an inferior ST elevation MI. And that's certainly what the patient had. Now, a few other key points with inferior STEMIs um, is that these patients, because it's involving the inferior portion, the heart, uh, you want to think of and look at the precordial leads, which we don't show here, um, but you're looking for if there's any ST depression in V1 through V3, that may suggest also posterior involvement. Because in these patients, if you see these inferior leads involved, you may think of uh, RV 
involvement, okay, in RCA, the right coronary artery, that in most people, they're mostly right-sided dominant, meaning that the right coronary artery gives off the posterior descending artery, and as a result, there could be some uh, posterior basal involvement as well, okay, posterior inferior MI in the context of an inferior MI. Another important thing is those that have an RV infarct, so if you see ST elevation in V1, you may get the right-sided leads because those with RV infarcts are actually preload dependent, so it really Really does change your management okay if that's if you don't get that part that's okay okay but uh, this is a good example our 86 year old had substernal chest pain uh, had this inferior STEMI went uh, was loaded plavix aspirin put on heparin uh, taken to the cath lab had a big proximal RCA uh, infarction was stented did well thereafter um, and is doing just fine now uh, but you also want to think about the RCA starts to feed is the vascular supply to the SA node, the AV node. You can think of some conduction defects such as AV blocks that occur in the setting, slower heart rates, and so forth, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind, okay? In fact, some people with large uh, right-sided, maybe even proximal RC infarcts may have, may sometimes require temporary pacing thereafter as they're recovering. So keep those things in mind. Remember, RV infarct, preload dependent, uh, so cautious on some of the medications. All right, so that's what we had for the question. Now um, there's like so many questions coming in about what resources I recommend, okay? And obviously I'm gonna be very biased, but I'm biased because I, I think that we do have the best resource, okay? And uh, a few points why, okay? I didn't think this through, but um, I've gone through probably every resource, you know, that's been out there from all the introductory books. You know, a lot of people say start with Dubin's. Yeah, I started with Dubin's. Um, is it helpful? Not sure. You know, it helps you get some things under your belt, a few concepts. Is it helpful clinically? Probably not. Would I recommend it? Oh, if you have nothing else to read, yes. Um, but that's probably it because you're going to need more than that. Okay, so my idea is why are you going to spend so much time going through a book maybe you have nothing else to do and so you do that you know i did it so you know i've read that book so i wouldn't not recommend it um it's been helpful to many so you can try it uh, there's a lot of textbooks i read marriott's choose um, a lot of other resources uh you know the best the only ekg book i'll ever need or some title as such yes it's a good book but uh does it do all you need Oh, and for those reasons, I probably wouldn't recommend them unless, you know, you want to read everyone out there. You know, I've read them and I, I really thank those authors because they helped me develop the fund of knowledge that I have. Uh, although I would not say that I would recommend them if there weren't any other options. And that's why I want to introduce you to what I call the ultimate EKG experience, okay? Because those will take you to beginner level, but won't provide much clinical context, okay? We take you from beginner to expert. Our courses are all accredited. All our content is out there. All physician developed, physician approved, used by thousands of medical providers, institutions, and programs around the world, okay? We are probably the most used in those curriculum. At, uh, at this point, okay? And we're continuing to build new things for our fellows. Uh, we teach at all levels, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, our techs uh, that we have at Mayo Clinic are all using our resources. It's the primary resource used, okay? And, you know, I don't say that, but I really think we provide everything. You know, we have books, we have videos for every single lesson, we have calipers that you get, we have thousands of questions and so much content to really get you to master EKGs. You know, and all those books that you read, yes, you may pick up on a few things and you may find them helpful, but none of them truly make you understand why you see what you see on the EKG. And if I ever fail to do that, then that's on me and you can let me know. But um, I think our track record speaks for itself and hopefully you'll check us out, okay? 
as thousands have already done so. So if you're interested in what we have to offer, you can go to ekgguide.com, okay, put it here, where we have hundreds of lessons, there's thousands of practice, so you can master all topics. If you like books to correspond, you can get that. If you want calipers, we include those. If you want to grow with a community of experts, you can do so. If you want awards, you can climb the leaderboard and become the ultimate EKG leader um, across the world on our platform. Uh, you can also, in the next few weeks, start to earn CME for all levels, okay? Um, we have so much coming out. All of our fellows will have great new content coming out. We'll have a number of new courses coming out. If you like pacemakers, if you like Echo, a lot of good stuff coming soon. So, you know, yes, I'm super biased because I created the content, but um, I like to lean on those that have used it and at all levels. And I recommend you try it out. You know, you can go and check out our course here at ekgguy.com. And I've already put a, you know, if you want to try some of the video, some of the practice, go ahead. There's an EKG Explorer package. Uh, you know, it's all there for you to try out until you fully commit. But I promise if you truly want to learn EKGs and master them and maybe even become an instructor, uh, definitely check it out. Well, that's all I got today. Thanks for listening. And I hope you have a uh, wonderful day.